Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. Uh, I think this problem is kind of my invention. I don't think I've seen it anywhere. If you do know that if this has been published before, please let me know in the comment section. So we have three identical rectangles that are inscribed in an equilateral triangle with side length one. And we're going to find the area of each rectangle. Since all of them are identical, we're just going to find one of the areas. All right, at this point, if you want, pause the video and try this problem first. So this problem is really cool. Uh, I like it. Uh, it's kind of interesting because there are no circles, first of all, right? We're dealing with uh, sharp corners here, uh, which kind of makes it different from the other puzzles. Anyways, let's get started. So what do we have? We, da we do have three identical rectangles. Uh, so the... The rectangles are not squares, so their uh, base and height are different. So I'm going to start by naming the bases and the heights. So let's go ahead and name them something. Maybe I'll call this A, and then I'll call the height H. So this is going to be H. This is going to be A. This is going to be A. This is going to be A. This is going to be H, and this is going to be A. Awesome. Now, obviously, we do get more information from here, such as this one is H minus A so on and so forth. Uh, we do have some gaps here. Okay, so the only thing we know about the triangle is that its side length is one and it's equilateral. Okay, cool. That actually gives us a lot of information. That's pretty good. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, notice that these are 60 degree angles here and here. Great. So we do have 30, 60, 90 triangles. Uh, so since the base of the one of the triangle um, one of the rectangles coincides with the base of the triangle, we can safely assume that uh, the height is going to be perpendicular to the base. So I think it's uh, safe to assume that these are going to be 30, 60, 90 triangles. Okay. Now, what else am I going to do? Since I know that uh, I do have two 30, 60, 90 triangles here and here, I can actually find the missing side lengths in terms of H and A, such as. This one is going to be, so this is the longer leg. The shorter leg is going to be that divided by root 3. So h divided by square root of 3 can be written as h square root of 3 divided by 3. So it's going to be this one, h square root of 3 divided by 3. And since the height is a here, which is, again, the longer leg, the shorter leg is going to be a times square root of 3 over 3. Okay, great. So I was able to uh, find all the missing lengths in terms of a and h, which means that the base of the triangle, which is 1, can actually be written in terms of A and H, but that's not enough information. Let's go ahead and write that first, and then we'll see why that's not enough. So this gives me basically H root 3 over 3 plus A plus H plus A root 3 over 3 equals 1. That's the side length for the triangle. Awesome. I do need another piece of information, and do you know where that is going to come from? Well, this is 30, 60, 90 triangle, but that doesn't really help. What's going to help us is actually going to be coming from here, which is great because this rectangle, I mean, this triangle can actually be used. How? Well, we know that this is 60 degrees, right? That's a 60 degree angle. So this is a 30 degree angle. So now we do have the legs and they're not, uh, they're, how should I put this? Okay. They're expressed in terms of H and A, so I can relate them. Okay, what was the ratio? Uh, the ratio of the longer leg to the shorter leg is going to be square root of 3, which is also tangent 60, right? So, in this case, I can write that h divided by h minus a is equal to square root of 3. I hope you can see that. It is just basically coming from the fact that tangent 60 is equal to square root of 3. Or if you don't want to use trigonometry, you can use the properties of 30, 60, 90 triangle. So, I do have these two equations, which is cool, because now I can use them. But my goal is to find H and A, kind of, right? And this is a system of equations. Uh, so, what we can do is, we can actually put this together a little bit. So, make it a little nicer. So, let me go ahead and work on this first. Uh, I can put the H's together. That's going to give me, uh, if I make a common denominator, it should give me 3H plus square root of 3H divided by 3 plus 3a plus square root of 3a divided by 3, and that's equal to 1. 
Okay, nice. So it's not super bad uh, because uh, what I can do is I can write it as 3 plus root 3 times h plus 3 plus root 3, the same thing here. We do see some sort of symmetry is equal to 1, but when you cross multiply, you're going to get a 3. Awesome. So this is good enough uh, for now. And now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work, have to work this out. How do you work it out? Uh, let's cross multiply. h gives me square root of 3h minus square root of 3a. So since I have an equation in h and a, I can actually use substitution if I can get one of them in terms of the other one. So let's go ahead and isolate a here and then put the h on the other side. And then it can be written as what? I can write it as square root of 3 minus 1 multiplied by h. Awesome. Now at this point, you might be thinking, oh, are we going to write a in terms of h or h in terms of a and then substitute? Yes, we can do that. Or we can do things a little differently here. And I'm going to show you how. This is actually very, very cool. Something that I really like with ratios and proportions. And they don't have to be uh, rational numbers all the time. We can also do the same thing with irrationals. This is what I'm talking about. Okay. I can call this number. So let me put it this way. I can call h. Since h is square root of 3 multiplied by something, I can actually replace h with square root of 3 times k, which is going to give me on the right-hand side square root of 3 multiplied by square root of 3 minus 1 times k. If I divide that by square root of 3, then a happens to be square root of 3 minus 1 multiplied by k. Now, what is uh, so good about using k here is that I'm able to express a and h in terms of something else instead of expressing one in terms of the other. So I find it a little better or easier in this case. You may or may not agree with me. Let's go ahead and substitute. So I'm going to replace h with square root of 3k here. So it's going to look like this. 3 plus root 3 multiplied by square root of 3k plus 3 plus root 3. Now, a is going to be replaced with this. So that's going to be square root of 3 minus 1 times k. And this is equal to 3. Awesome. So what we're going to do here is we're going to work this out. And notice that everything is in terms of k. So that's kind of nice. So now what I can do is I can distribute this. And let's see what we're going to get. So we should be getting something like 3 root 3 k plus 3k from here. And when I go ahead and distribute this, if you want, you can write it this way. Square root of 3 multiplied by root 3 plus 1. And then these two are conjugates. When you multiply them, you're going to be getting 2 from there. So it's going to be basically 2 root 3k. All right. To keep a long story short, we can just write it like that. Okay. Equals 3. Awesome. So that makes it a little easier, you know. So distribute that way. Or you could just distribute and simplify. You will get the same thing. 3 root 3 minus 3 plus 3 minus root 3. Same thing. Okay. Now, since everything has k in it, uh, what I can do is I can pull the k out. And then now I have 3 root 3k and 2 root 3k, which makes 5 root 3k plus 3k. And that equals 3. Awesome. Nice. So what are we going to do next? Well... So what we're supposed to do at this point is basically we are supposed to divide both sides by uh, 5 root 3 plus 3, obviously. We're trying to solve for k because if I'm able to solve for k, then I can solve for a and h. Then I can basically find what I'm looking for. All right. Sounds good. Uh, let's check our work here. Let's make sure we don't make any mistakes. 3 root 3k, 3k. And then I get root 3 times uh, root 3 multiplied by root 3 plus root 3 plus root 3 multiplied by that. It should be 3 minus 1, which is 2. Okay, this looks good so far. So k is going to equal what? Uh, 3 divided by 5 root 3 plus 3. I'm going to rationalize the denominator here. Let's go ahead and do that. And that should give us something nicer, hopefully. And what are we going to get from here? Multiplying these two things together, you should be getting something nice, hopefully. And let's see, uh, I should be getting 74. Okay, that's divisible by 3. So I could probably just save the 3 for cross cancellations. And then this should give me 75 
minus 9, which is, uh, what's 75 minus 9? 66, right? All right, awesome. So k is going to, <coughs> excuse me, uh, k is going to equal, um, okay, I can just go ahead and simplify this. That's going to give me a, uh, basically a 22 there, right? Okay. And then uh, what I'm going to do next is actually, uh, I'm going to substitute this, right? Uh, we're going to replace k with that. And then let's see what happens from there. Okay, awesome. So what am I trying to find? Oh, by the way, I'm trying to find the area. So let's go ahead and write the area of the rectangle. The area of the rectangle is obviously a times h. So that's what I need. And a and h are both expressed in terms of k. So what I can do is I can actually multiply them like this, right? And then I'll be getting k squared. Awesome. So let's go ahead and substitute everything there. This should give us 3 minus root 3 multiplied by k squared. So what I need to do now is basically square this expression and multiply by 3 minus root 3. Okay, awesome. So let's go ahead and solve this problem. Uh, how am I going to do that? I'm going to square the top. Uh, hopefully it's going to give me something nice. Uh, 5 root 3 squared is going to be 75 minus 30 root 3 plus 9 divided by 22 squared, which should be 484. Okay? All right, 440 plus 44. So uh, I get 84 from here. So let's see if that's going to give us something nice. Uh, this should be 84 minus 30 root 3 divided by 484. And if I simplify that, let's see what we can simplify by. Well, 84 is divisible by 6. Uh, that should be 6 times 14, and that's also divisible. So looks like I can divide by 6, but what about 484? 484 is 22 times 22. So it is 11 times 2 and 11 times 2. Basically, it's 11 squared times 2 squared. So it's not going to be divisible by 6, unfortunately, but it's divisible by 2 at least, right? And it's not divisible by 4, unfortunately. That's bad. Okay, anyways, but that's okay. Uh, let's go ahead and divide by 2. That's going to give me 42 minus 15 root 3. And if I divide by that, 242. Now, at this point, we can just go ahead and distribute. Uh, 3 times 100, uh, 3 times 42, what am I talking about? 126 minus 45 root 3 minus 42 root 3 plus 15 times 3, which is 45, all over 242. And from here, the area is supposed to equal, uh, that's going to give me 171 minus 87 root 3 over 242. All right, that should be the area of each rectangle. That's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.